Marvellous. Okay, you've got that on there as well. Brilliant. Thanks, Toby. Um, yeah, so 10 minutes just talking a bit about Row IT, where we are, what we do, the sort of work we're, we're up to at the moment, a bit about our culture. So you hope to get some insights into um, um, you know, us as, as, a, as a company. So, yeah. Um, okay, so we're a software development consultancy. Um, our registered office is in Liscard, which is in Cornwall, but our main office, I'm afraid, is over the border just slightly. We're at um, in Plymouth, at the Plymouth Science Park, up next to Derriford Hospital. Um, we're currently 12 strong as an organisation, and we predominantly do software development, software engineering projects, which sees us um, working with API management solutions, systems integration, um, a lot with cloud transitioning, Toby talked about that um, earlier, as well as um, a lot of R&D to do with sort of interoper interoperability standards and data exchange. Um, so some of our clients, um, some quite significant clients, We've got the Met Office up in Exeter, we do a lot of work with them and have been for the last 10 years. Last couple of years, been working closely with the Hydrographic Office up in Taunton. Now, not a lot of people know about them, but they're a bit like the Ordnance Survey of the of the sea. They part of the MOD, and um, they they map under the ocean. Um, doing a bit of work with NATO, uh, me and a couple of guys from the team um, out in Poland um, last year, and doing some wider stuff for MOD and a few private sector organisations as well. Um, tech stack, um, some of the sort of quite popular technologies um, that are out there at the moment. A lot of HTML, JavaScript, Angular at the front end. Doing a lot with Java, Spring, um, large databases at the back end, um, lots with the cloud, continuous integration, and, and so on. Um, so where are we applying these? Well, we talked about some of those clients earlier. I've got three slides which really gives us a bit of an insight into um, the kind of work we're doing with some of our, some of our clients. Um, so we do a lot with the Met Office. Now the Met Office, you'll probably know, weather forecasting, climate research, um, big investment over the years with supercomputers and they pretty much the, the, the weather sector has really led a lot of um, high performance computing over the years. Um, they've recently replaced their HPC um, I think it was 97 million uh, investment in, 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 in that system. Um, and they produce a lot of data. They do a lot of number crunching. Um, so one of the systems that we've been involved in for the last 10 years is an archive. So these forecasts come out of the supercomputer a number of times a day. The scientists are working on climate research projects. They're producing some really big data sets. Um, the archive at the moment is over 30 petabytes. Um, anyone know what a petabyte is? A lot. a lot. Okay. So megabytes, gigabytes, a thousand megs, terabyte, a thousand gigs, petabyte, a thousand terabytes. Okay. So pretty large stuff, and that's growing. They've got this big issue at the moment. We've got Moore's law, which they talks about every two years, compute power sort of doubles. That's one thing. Storage of data isn't going at the same rate, and that's causing the industry a bit of a problem. So the Met Office are, are trying to wrestle with this problem at the moment, and we've been helping them with that. Um, they've got this, this solution developed in Java, um, pretty much a back-end system with a bit of a HTML JavaScript front-end, which is basically acting as the go-between between, between the, the supercomputer and the scientist and the back-end archive. So we've got 150 terabytes a day flowing through that system, which needs to be indexed. Um, sorted and then actually applied to the archive or, or retrieved from the archive. And um, this is a high availability system. So if this system goes down after 12 hours or so, that means the supercomputer stops and that causes big issues. Um, they work out it's about 50,000 pounds a day if the supercomputer can't run and it can't archive its outputs. So yeah, really good project. We've been helping their in-house team um, with the development, with their architecture, looking ahead, looking at the, the next generation of supercomputers, working out how to scale their systems. So that's the HPC. In the background, yeah, you've got the nice picture there of the Cray. Um, they've moved from IBM to Cray in recent years. Okay. Um, another one here. I got my chance to show some, some nice shiny things there. Um, 
So we've been working with the Met Office and the MOD on some of their tactical decision aids. What do I mean by that? So you have a weather forecast, and then you've got all kinds of military equipment. Well, the military equipment needs certain weather conditions in order to function properly. Um, so what have we got on here? So what's this one in the, in the bottom right? Anyone know what that is? Apache, TAC helicopter, yeah. So this bad boy, it's got a sensor at the front here called the MTADS. It basically flies on things like infrared sensors or night illumination sensors. So the weather affects that. Depending on what the weather's doing, that sensor will be either brilliant or average. So being able to predict what those sensors are like um, helps with mission planning and for the pilots before they go out to know what kind of things they're going to be able to see and when they're going to be able to see it. Up the top there, it's, um, is that night? Can you see what the, what the plane is? Can you make it out? It's quite new. Oh, it's the F-35, the Lightning II. Do you know what it's sat upon? It's not a very good, not a very good picture. It's on an aircraft carrier. It's the new Queen Elizabeth. So we work with both those, those projects, um, doing a lot of stuff for the F-35 mission planning systems, taking some weather data, work getting it into the right format so it can feed in, and then they can compute sort of fuel load, payload requirements, etc., for those, um, those craft. The Queen Elizabeth, Elizabeth is um, important because we're developing some some systems, these, these tactical decision aids are going to be deployed onto that sort of platform. They also need to have a weather feed coming through. And we've been working closely with MOD about how they can package up that stuff, deploy it onto the systems, work out how to get data to the system, because bandwidth can be a limitation at times. So really interesting, really interesting area. And again, from the, from the first presentation, talk about command and control systems, is getting data into those, those kinds of systems. So again, tech stack, um, in this case, doing a lot with Angular, HTML, the front end, JavaScript, Material UI, um, a lot with Java, and, um, and web services behind, behind the scenes. Um, looking at using things like um, containerization to package things up and to, to help with scalability. And um, something I've been speaking to the group about, actually designing these systems with security baked in from, from the get-go on it. So looking at things like OWASP, and um, if you haven't heard about it, go away and Google it. Um, this is an organization that really looks at the security threats in our industry. And um, from a development point of view, it's, it's working out how to develop these front-end or back-end applications to guard against um, some quite common pitfalls. Okay, so um, worth checking that one out. And the final one here to do with projects is um, some work we've been doing with a um, public sector organization to, to put together a DevOps pipeline. Uh, working with um, web services, Amazon Web Services, to produce an infrastructure as code project. Um, so when they check something into the Git repository, it can trigger that build, it can package things up, it can containerize it, it can perform the necessary tests and deploy it onto their, their end systems. And it's something that um, you know, a number of companies are looking at at the moment, and we've been helping that customer on that journey. Um, where are we? Okay. Um, so a bit about our culture, um, the agile approach to how we're working, big on the knowledge share. Uh, we have this thing called Pizza Fridays where somebody in the group will, will share some knowledge with the, with the rest of the team um, of a particular topic. It could be about a current project or some emerging technologies. Um, we're very much about having a growth mindset in our organization. Um, we're always learning new things and um, Tony, Toby was absolutely right. What's cool today is not going to be cool tomorrow. There's always a new technology coming out. So you've got to have that ability to pick up new technologies and, and move with the times. Um, a lot of our training is done through, through conferences. So Agile on the Beach, um, there's a guy there supporting a row IT bag. So I've got that one in there. Anyone know who that is? The cat gives it away. Okay, come on Toby, you were there. That's it. Yeah, so he's the guy that coined the phrase BDD, Behavior Driven Design. Um, check it out if you don't know anything about it. Um, so we've got a couple of guys off to an Angular conference next month. Um, and the other thing is treating people as grown-ups, having a bit of flexible working. So not everything's a nine to five. It could be a 10 to four. It could be a, a seven to seven. It depends on the work. And we really encourage our, our, our staff to really manage their time and um, yeah, do the best for the projects. So um, pretty much our final size, just to summarize, you know, we're a consultancy. Um, 
soft skills, Toby talked about it earlier, having that ability to engage with customers and your peers to be able to share knowledge and, and to get your points across. Because um, we're a consultancy, we do tend to travel. Um, a lot of our stuff is done out of our, our office in Plymouth, but occasionally we have to go on site to our, to our customers. And um, all our team are exposed to a wide variety of projects. Um, we don't have developers, technical architects, solution architects, or DevOps guys. We need people to do that stuff. So when people start with us, they might be doing some development. But at some point, they'll be doing so be some DevOps. At some point, they'll be doing some architecture. So we expect our team to be able to grow in, into, into various roles and um, you know, be able to react to the, to the requirements of the customer. Okay, and that's it for myself. I don't know if we've got time for questions. We don't have time for questions, I'm afraid. But we do have time for a round of applause. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.